Well, hello, 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 and welcome to another edition of Empowered Heart to Heart. We are so glad uh, that you are here. My name is Rhonda Simmons, and I am the founder and CEO of the Simmons Empowerment Foundation. And uh, I'm just really excited because I have yet another guest and a good friend uh, to interview today. And uh, I'm looking forward to hearing what she has to say about her journey from being a teen mom to a successful, empowered, professional woman. Before I bring her uh, into the studio, I do want to share with you um, ways in which you can uh, reach out to the Simmons Empowerment Foundation because we are a resource for teen moms. Our mission is to have a home for unwed teen moms and to empower them through pre and postnatal health education, as well as job skills training and counseling and coaching services as needed. And so we want to make sure that our teen moms are being helped and they are being empowered. That is the most important thing to us. One other thing is that this fall, we are so excited to have the ability and the opportunity to give away scholarships to um, at-risk youth, not just teen moms, although they get the preference, um, but we want to give scholarships away to eligible teens who are either going on to college or universities or going to vocational schools. And we even want to consider those younger people ages 12 uh, and above who may still be in a private school because there's tuition with private schools and we wanna be a blessing. And so if you want that college, uh, that scholarship application, please text the word graduate to 33777 to get the link to the scholarship application. All righty. Well, well, without any further ado, I introduce to you my good friend, Norma Baker Fabre. And she is a wonderful lady. And I'm so excited that you're here, Norma. Welcome. Thank you. Hi, Rhonda. And I want to say hello to all your podcast friends. I'm excited about being here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We're excited to have you. So glad uh, that we met several years ago and uh, we worked together. You have been a blessing in my life ever since. And so today uh, I just wanted to uh, bring you on to the show to, uh, so that your testimony of your journey can be a blessing to somebody else. And so Norma, why don't you tell me about yourself and your story as a teen mom or a single parent? Okay, well, it all started in San Antonio um, from a traditional Hispanic family, the oldest of three children. Um, my parents, both of my parents, um, did not have a high school diploma. So I was brought up in a very modest home environment. Um, we didn't have much, um, but one of the things that we did have was um, that uh, being a hard worker was everything. And my dad did a great job of modeling that. Um, to me and my siblings. As long as you work hard, that's all that matters. My mother was a stay-at-home mom. She didn't work. Um, so she took care of the house and took care of us. Um, and uh, because we did not have a lot of uh, finances at home, we moved around a lot. So I went to 10 different schools. Wow. Five different elementary schools. Um two different middle schools and three different high schools. Uh, so it was very hard to um, develop those friendships that uh, children typically develop um, and have that stability as far as friends, teachers, uh, campus. Um, and my parents were not very involved in education. You know, they, they just were strong believers of you work hard, you take care of your family. That, that that's the those are the two most important things. So um, when we uh, moved yet again um, to my third high school, at and I've always loved school. School seemed for me to be my escape from things. Yeah. You know, it was like 
I could read a book and like I'm living this different life now um, through the characters in the book and I could talk about it. People didn't really know much about me. So I could make up these stories about my life and who I am. And, and it just took me away from all the things that we did not have at home. You know, at home, you know, I was very aware of the fact that uh, sometimes we didn't have money to pay our bills, to buy groceries, to get health care, you know, and being the oldest, I had a lot of responsibilities. Yeah. Um, so, so how do you feel that your home life influenced the choices that you made or your actions? Well, they definitely made me have this sense of awareness that I didn't want that for myself. I didn't want a home life of not knowing how I was going to care for myself or care for others. So it instilled this drive in me that in spite of not having much, that was not going to be my future. Um, so, you know, that from a very young age, I saw the sadness in my parents when they couldn't do for their children um, like, you know, maybe we can't have a birthday celebration today for you, but maybe next year we'll be able to do it. You know, our finances may be different or Christmas is going to be a little different this year. You know, I saw the sadness in them. It wasn't sad for us because we didn't know any different, right. but I could see the sadness in my parents. Mm -hmm. And so I knew then that I, I just did not want that home environment for me in the future. Mm -hmm. um, so school was, like I said, my escape. Um, in high school, um, I was involved in everything I could be involved in. I was a future teachers of America. I was, <laughs> How ironic. <laughs> yeah. And I still have my card. Believe it or not, I still have my card. Oh, that is so cool. That is so cool. <laughs> and I was secretary of the student council. I was on the dance team. And that's where I met um, my high school sweetheart. He was a football player. We became inseparable. Mm -hmm. We were just like uh, glued at the hip. We just did everything together. Um, and then we graduated from high school and he went to college in Houston. And, you know, my parents never talked about college with me. That was not something that, you know, like education just was not a focus for them. Hard work was a focus for them, but not necessarily education. And I loved it. So I was working part time and I was going to a local community college. Well, my high school sweetheart was coming in on the weekends and um, we just decided since we were so far apart that we were going to elope. And so we did that secretly. Parent, our families didn't know. However, Shortly after that, a few months after that, I found out that I was pregnant. So I graduated at 17 and got married at 18. And now here we are with this, okay, not only do we have to tell our parents that we're married, but now we have to tell them that we're gonna have a child. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That's scary times right there. And and I didn't want to do it. I did yeah. not. I, I said, my family's going to kill me. You know, I don't want to tell them. Um, so he brought his father over to the house. And um, in fact, they came to the door and I, I answered the door and I shut the door. <laughs> I can't believe you guys are here. No, they're going to kill me. So they, my um, father-in-law at the time was very persistent. He continued to knock on the door. <laughs> Uh -huh. <laughs> so um, they came in and talked to my family and uh, you can just imagine the disappointment in my parents. Um, you know, uh, I had let them down, mm -hmm. you know, and I had lied to them and wasn't truthful to them, let alone, you know, about being married to him. Um, so that was very, it was very hard. It was very so hard for me. I, I can only imagine. Um, and while you were talking, I was thinking that you had all of all of this stress in your mind from having to face your family, 
But on the other side, were you afraid to be a wife and a mom and, and still a teenager? Did you, how did you feel about all of that side of it? So remember how I told you education was my escape from reality? Yeah. Yeah, I had no longer an escape from reality. This was real now. So, um, and I wasn't prepared for it. You know, eloping was romantic. You know, we could, we knew that we were married, but no one else knew, you know? So um, it, it wasn't real. It, it was kind of like a, a fantasy that we could just um, play around with whenever we were together. Right. But now there's a child involved. So wow. there's no more fantasy. No, yeah. <laughs> as they say, ready or not, here mm -hmm. I come. That's right. And because we were married, um, I was no longer covered by my dad's insurance either. So had no health insurance. So very quickly, um, we found out all of these challenges that were going to be coming at us at once. And we were not prepared for that. Wow. Um, so uh, we, he ended up finishing the semester and then moving back to San Antonio and we got an apartment and we were trying to, you know, uh, develop this family that we were not prepared to develop because I was 18, he was 19. Um, we uh, never had enough. We couldn't make ends meet. Um, and then because we didn't have insurance, we had to pay everything out of pocket um, for the birth of our son. Uh, so it was a, a huge hardship. Yes. And, and, and based upon what you said at the very beginning, it sounds like you were living the life you said you never wanted um, at the beginning. And, you know, when you were growing up watching your parents, so what, what type of support system did you have in place, if any, to rely on? Well, um, it was obvious that my family was not going to help me. And Hispanic families, um, it's an embarrassment for their daughter to have a child and not be prepared for this child. You know, um, even though I was married, they were still... Um, very disappointed and and they made it known they voiced my parents voiced their their feelings about it and their disappointments about it every opportunity that they had um and so I, at, at the same time i married someone out of my race so that added another uh layer to um the situation that i was going through you know and i just you know, we were a very faithful family. We went to church every Sunday and I just prayed. I just prayed and prayed and prayed for um, some guidance. Um, and so little by little, you know, uh, my husband at the time and I, we knew that we did not um, want to uh, succumb to what my parents were saying as far as you're going to have a hard life. You know, you're not, it's not going to be any different than what you have here. We wanted to show them something different. We just had this sense of pride where we're going to show you that that's not going to be the case. Wow. Wow. Mm -hmm. Well, that's good. How, how did you figure out how to be a mom? And, and, you know, I know you said you were the oldest, but for example, I don't have any children of my own. And so if someone asked me, uh, you know, why is my child crying all night? My response would be, I don't know, but let's pray about it. I don't think that's really <laughs> the right response. Yeah. <laughs> it out. They're not born with the instruction manual. How did you figure right. it out? So I was blessed to have an amazing mother-in-law. Wow. So she taught me how to be a mother, how to be a wife, and how to take care of a home. And if it weren't for her, I, I probably wouldn't be the person I am today. You know, she just um, showed me unconditional love. And it was, you know, it was like a kid raising a kid. And, and she understood that. And I think because she was also a young mom, 
you know, she was 19 when she had her first child. Um, she understood that it only takes one person to influence her life and change it dramatically. Yeah. And that's what she did for me. That's exactly yeah. what she did for me. Wow. That's an amazing thing. You know, sometimes people feel like um, it, it takes something really huge to be a help and a blessing. But like you just said, all you need is one, mm -hmm. you know, one yeah. person in your corner. And um, just like your situation and uh, Nancy that I interviewed the other day, there are some common themes I'm hearing is that sometimes the, the one that's going to help may be an unexpected person or an unexpected group. It help may come from unexpected places. Wow, what an amazing, amazing testimony. So what does empowerment mean to you? Empowerment means knowing your purpose. To me, it means knowing your purpose. What is your purpose in life? Why do you do the things that you do? When you know your purpose, you have direction. And once, once that happens, then you take these action steps to get there. You know, so that's what empowerment means to me. It's knowing your purpose and taking those action steps to get there and achieve whatever it is you desire to achieve. And sometimes you may take some detours to get there, but you can get there. Yes, absolutely. I totally agree. So if you were to send a message to your younger self, what would it be? It would be, don't be afraid to seek out help. You know, I, I didn't seek out any help. You know, I took it all in my situation. I thought I was the only one going through this. Um, I know now we have so many resources like the Simmons Empowerment Foundation. You know, we have the internet where you can um, research what resources are out there to help your current situation. It doesn't necessarily have to be family and friends. And sometimes they may not be the best resources for you. I know right. for me, my family and friends, my friends couldn't help me. My, my, my family, my parents weren't going to help me because it's like, well, you did this and now you're going to have to figure it out. But, you know, someone saw something in me um, that was my um, mother-in-law at the time. And uh, she jumped in and helped me. But that's not always the case for everyone. So now with the resources that are available through the Internet and foundations such as yours, I think, you know, don't be afraid to go out there and seek out these resources. Yes. It's okay yes. not to have all the answers. There are people out there that are willing to support you. Yes, absolutely. Wow. You have such a, a life story. One of the things, though, that you haven't shared with us, who are you now? What have you accomplished now from those meager beginnings to now? Okay. What, what? Who are you? So, you know, um, once I found out that uh, uh, I was going to have a child, then at the time, uh, my husband at the time decided to join the military and we moved away and I was 19 years old and five months pregnant with my second. <laughs> and now here I am in California with no family. <laughs> my mother-in-law is not there to help me. You know, I'm by myself. So um, the military had organizations such as family support groups that were able to, um, you know, provide some support for me. Um, and one of the things that I quickly realized was, okay, I need to, now that I'm going to have two children, I need to find out what opportunities or experiences I should be providing to my sons, because no matter what, we are going to be successful. I'm going to show my parents that in spite of doing things a little different, it's not going to change my aspirations. Yeah. Um, and so I started digging into child development and reading, you know, I love to read. So reading about child development, providing those experiences, um, working at a child development center, having my children attend that child development center. That was the seed that was planted in my heart that turned into a passion. And so I know firsthand um, the power of education. 
yeah. and what it can do to your mm -hmm. life. Um, and so I was committed to learning and I'm still learning. I, I love learning. I'm a lifelong learner. Um, no one can take your education away from you. That's the one thing that you will have forever. Uh, and so um, going to working, going to night school, raising a family, my son seeing me, we're, we're learning and doing homework together at the kitchen table. You know, I just did that. It took me 10 years to get my degree, but I got my degree. And then five more years, my master's. Mm -hmm. And currently going into my 27th year in education, the last 10 as an administrator. Wow, that is amazing. Hats off to you. You know, it, sometimes people are so focused on the destination where it's really the journey that makes you. It's, right. it's the process that molds you and makes you into who you are and who you're going to become. And um, it, it, it sounds like every, every obstacle, you made a choice. Mm -hmm. Do I, you know, do I stay here or do I figure this out and overcome it? And it's, it's almost like um, with your, with your first son, you know, you, you had that support sy system in place. You learned the lessons you need to learn. And then with the second son, it was like, okay, class is over. You're on your own. You got to figure this out. <laughs> it's on the job training. <laughs> yes, absolutely. absolutely. Training. Something and I so, also want to share. Yeah. Um, is that being away from family and friends and only having, you know, my husband at the time and my two sons, um, there was this commitment that you have to have in, in what you want out of life. Mm -hmm. um, and so I believe that was the time when I decided that my mindset was going to be a positive mindset and being committed to looking at the positive side of things because I felt the negativity from my family. Not that they did it intentionally, but because of my situation, because being a teen mom was something that they were embarrassed um, about. Um, it was a negative thing for them. Um, and I never saw my sons as being a mistake or something negative. I just saw it as, okay, this is a challenge. Now I have to, you know, take on that challenge. And what am I going to do about it? You know, am I going to sulk and just feel sorry for myself? How's that going to help our future? Or am I going to do something? Am I going to commit to my purpose? What is my purpose? What action steps am I going to take? And then surrounding myself with like-minded people who are going to lift me up and not pull me down. That is very hard to do because of, you know, society and the things that everyone has to deal with in society. I think if we just change our mindset from not calling something a mistake or a problem and calling it a challenge or an opportunity, that alone helps you um, get out of that situation quicker, learn from it, and it makes you stronger. So yes. not shying away from challenges, taking them head on mm -hmm. and moving forward and being committed to that. Absolutely. You know, Norma, you, 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 you bring up a very valid point because, you know, for what we do here at the Simmons Empowerment Foundation, if a young lady comes to us and she's already pregnant and looking like she's about to go into labor any second, that is not the time to have the conversation about, well, you shouldn't have done this and you could have done that. Um, it, it's not a time of judgment. It, right. That that conversation uh, is over. The mm -hmm. only thing we want to know is, what are you going to do now? What's the plan? Right. You have to have a plan. And, um, um, you know, one of our other uh, uh, people that, that uh, represent us uh, in a community she says that uh, teen pregnancy is not a death sentence. Right. You know, it, it, like you said, it's a challenge mm -hmm. and they have to figure out how to overcome the challenge. They have mm -hmm. to be guided. They have to um, be exposed to resources that can help them. Because mm -hmm. when, when you talk about empowerment, that, that means that 
I'm going to help myself. Mm -hmm. If you just give me the right tools and resources and show me how to do it, then I, maybe I can make better choices and, and empower myself and know what to do. And, and your life is a testimony of that. And, and that is just so wonderful. Is there any other advice you'd like to give a teen mom today? I guess my advice for a teen mom would be that just because you're in this situation, don't think that um, you can no longer have the aspirations that you have. You can still have those same aspirations. It may take you a little longer to achieve them and just look at it as a detour. Plus, as you're growing and um, and reaching these aspirations, your child is going to see that. My son saw my commitment to learning, my commitment to wanting to be successful and providing them with opportunities that I wasn't afforded. And I think they're successful now because of it. And in fact, we have conversations about that. You know, mom, I saw you, you would put us to bed and you'd have a study group at nine o'clock and you'd be studying until one in the morning, you know? Oh. And, and I think back like, oh my gosh, like I did those things. And, and it just makes me so proud now to know that my sons recognize that that I never made an excuse for my situation mm -hmm. and that they were born out of love and that until they die or I die, they're going to know the love that a mother has for a child. Yes. Yes. Well, you are a wonderful mom, a wonderful friend. Um, you epitomize the word resilient. Oh, and uh, <laughs> yes, because you just keep going and keep pushing forward. And uh, even from the first time I met you, um, everything about you says, I will not settle for anything less than excellent. And uh, that is so powerful. And, and it's not something that you demand of others and not demand of yourself. And it's very evident that... Um, you're sorry for the doorbell. Uh, <laughs> it's not something that uh, you demand of others and not of yourself. And I just appreciate you being here today. Um, and this has been wonderful. And I know that someone is going to listen to the podcast or watch the video, and they're going to be so encouraged and know that there is hope, that there's opportunities available that there are resources available and that there are people that are rooting for them. In fact, let me also add that you're part of our team for our Dear Future Me program. And uh, that program, for those who may not know, uh, that program is all about um, in, improving college and career readiness for at-risk students. And I appreciate you being on the team with me and uh, helping us push students forward so that they can be prepared for what's next because there's always a what's next. Always. So, yeah. <laughs> so thank you so much for being on the show with me today. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing what's next for you too because there's no, there's no stopping you. And I appreciate you. you very much. And thanks for being here today. Appreciate you too. Thank you for the opportunity. Yes. All righty. Well, thank you so much for uh, tuning in to our podcast today or watching the video. However you're watching, we encourage you uh, to get involved with the Simmons Empowerment Foundation because we're about a great work. We're doing great things. And uh, we want you uh, to, again, if you haven't uh, heard about our scholarship program, make sure that you text the word graduate to 33777 to get the link to our scholarship application. The window closes August the 14th. And so if you want that free money, because that's what a scholarship is, if your student or yourself wants that free money, make sure you apply. The eligibility criteria is right there on the application and you are free to apply. Again, text GRADUATE to 33777 to get the link to the application. Um, I am so happy to have uh, interviewed Mrs. Norma Baker-Fabre, 
And so we want you to make sure that you keep tuning in to Empowered Heart to Heart, where we offer messages of hope. We offer conversations that heal and interviews that empower. Be blessed, be encouraged, and we'll see you next time.